Good morning, it's uh, Dawn here at Stickle Tarn. Um, as you can see, I've got the canner out again and I'm uh, back in the kitchen. Today I'm canning something um, totally different. I'm canning butter. Uh, it's not an approved method, but there are lots of people out there who do can butter quite successfully and it has a shelf life shel a shelf stable life of about up to five years if it's stored correctly after being canned um, the reason they do can it is because it is an animal fat product and therefore it's processed in the same way as animal fat which to me makes complete common sense so totally down to you whether you want to do it or not i'm quite happy to give it a go and try it um but like i say it, it's not an approved method and i'm doing it in the pressure canner there are those out there who i'm untangling my cables here before i trip over them who do butter a hot water bath or the oven method or whatever and um that to me uh, that that doesn't appeal to me I prefer to do or I prefer to try it I should say in the pressure canner uh, now I got the idea from Homestead Heart she pressure cans her butter to make it shelf stable and yeah I'm going to give it a go um, my butter being in the UK comes in what they call half pound blocks which are eight ounces, 227 grams. Um, of course, across the pond in America, they have it in sticks, and I'm not sure what a, how much a stick weighs. And she recommends using half and half, so half, salt, half salted and half unsalted. So that's what I've done. Now, mine's come from Farm Foods. It's a, an Irish butter, so you know it's not not come too far but farm foods i've found at the moment has been the best price for butter and i had some vouchers to use which made it even better so i bought half of the salted and half of the unsalted i've got these last two blocks to um, unwrap and they're going in whoops this pan here which is on the stove on a low I'll bring you over in a minute so let me get these in so, and I keep my wrappers as well because I use them for greasing etc so um, yeah when I'm doing any baking Yeah, so at the moment, at this precise moment in time, in farm foods, their butter is £1.10 uh, a block. And, um, and of course they do the usual, if you spend over, is it 20 or £25, you know, you get £2 off. So, let me show you what's in the pan. Carry you up over. right there's the butter slowly melting down now you do want it to melt really slowly you don't want it to burn you don't want it to cook you don't want it to brown you just want it to melt away nice and slow um, so that, that's going to take a bit of time but that's what I'm doing at the moment is just melting it down I've got my jars in the oven, my lids are in hot water, my water bath, my pressure canner is warming up here on the stove because this is going to be hot canning so everything has to be hot. Um, so I'm just getting the last few bits ready, I've got my rings ready, I've got my ladles and etc etc so I've got a few more bits to get out and keeping an eye on this now once it's melted down 
you want to bring it you don't want to boil it but you need to bring it to just literally to a simmer a simmer it will so you'll start getting foam on top you can skim the foam off which i will be doing um, and you can use the foam in mashed potato or anything like that and as it is we're having um, chicken pie or mashed potato later on tonight for dinner so i will use it then um, but when it starts to actually just start to simmer it the foam breaks that is when it is ready to start getting into the jars so until then you really really want to keep an eye on it and um a foreign body there um and just melt it down really slowly like i say you don't want to burn it don't want to caramelize it brown it anything like that so we'll come back once i'm ready to move on to the next stage right i'm um, back with the butter i'll just show you the foam is now forming on the top so i um, need to start skimming off that foam now, i've got my bowl got my spoon you don't have to skim off the foam if you don't want to um, but she does say it makes for a, a nicer butter if you do Her, her butter, when she melted it down, did have an awful lot of foam on it. Whether their butter is different to ours, I don't know. Or how different it is, or what's in it that makes it foam up. quite happy with what I've taken off there and let me tilt the camera down right oh the lights in it <coughs> on the other side and I still, let me tilt it down even more there we go right so like I said that foam um, I will just leave and uh, I will use it doing mashed potato. Paige, come out the way because you're going to get tangled up in cables. Thank you. Right. So I'm going to lift that off the heat. <coughs> oh. Put that one back on to carry on warming <clears throat> and then with my ladle I've put my jars over there because they are very hot and I've just taken them out of the oven so I'm going to ladle hang on where is my um funnel thingy hang on a sec well I don't know I don't know where my jar funnels have gone um, this is what happens when um, Martin washes up and he puts things away and then I can't find them and I've actually got two I've got a metal one and I've got a red one but they're not with all my other canning bits so I'll have to manage without let's put that one away I don't know how many jars this is going to fill so I just thought well I'll heat up a load out of the way I 
and we fill them leaving an inch of headspace. An inch of headspace is just below the screw line on the shoulder of the jar. That's about it there. So it's down. And you need to, with this, especially if you're making a mess like I am, wipe around the rim of the jar with vinegar. You do not want any grease there at all to interfere with your seal. And you're going to pop your lid on. Pop a ring on. That is exceedingly hot. And then <clears throat> I'm going to pop that here. Pop that in the pressure canner out of the way. And then I'm going to continue filling up my jars and then I'll uh, get back to you. Right, I've got all my butter into the jars, so I'm going to go ahead and get all the lids on. Making sure I give everything a good wipe with vinegar. Three, six, seven, seven pints of butter I've got there and that was um, what did I melt down that was 12 pound 12 pound of butter so I shall make a note of that for my um, in my little canning notebook that I use So I know in future how many jars I need for what I'm doing. Now she did 12 pound of butter and she had 13 jars, but I don't know how the American measurements differ from ours. Well, I'm putting them on empty jars there. Mm. Right, let's get some rings. felt being screwed down so I'm going to redo it that was a bit better now the bit of vinegar that's left I pour into the canner you don't have to but it does um, a bit of vinegar in the water stops the uh, jars getting cloudy all right now as you can see there is solids on the bottom but I will I'll show you what she sh said to do about the solids. So, I'll pop all them in there. Now this isn't the same as ghee 
because ghee is clarified so the solids are strained out and um, etc entirely different process so this is um right so that's my jars in let me take you over to show you there we go that's them all in so now I just want to put the lid on using opposites Right, that's them um, now in the pressure can. I've got to keep watching myself. I've got the microphone cable here. I think I need to sort look. Oh, I've got it all tangled around my foot now. An accident waiting to happen. Um, I need to look for a, uh, a Bluetooth one, I think. Um, if anybody's got one to recommend, just let me know. Uh, what was I saying? Yes, yeah, so that's, that's the jars in now. Um, before the weight goes on the pressure canner um, this has to vent which means we have to have a steady stream of steam coming out and we vent it for 10 minutes like that and what that does is that brings it all up to temperature in there and starts to increase the pressure ready for when we put the weight on and then it's just a matter of minutes then till it comes up to pressure um, and then we start the uh, processing so at the moment I've just got to bring it up it's just starting to sputter but I need a steady stream of steam coming out of there um, yeah so I shall do that vent it for 10 minutes and uh, then I will put um, 10 pound of weight in the weight will vary according to what your altitude is and this is processed the same as chicken so it's going to be um, a 10 pound weight and it is then processed for um, hang on right sorry about that um, I've got my little uh, book that I make notes in about canning um, yeah, so it gets processed for 75 minutes at a 10 pound pressure and that's in the pint jars. But whatever your altitude is, um, you want to uh, process accordingly. So, um, right, we will come back once that is vented and the weight is on and I've timed it to 75 minutes. Right, the pressure canner has finished and the pressure has dropped down so oh, I can start opening it up as always with a lid on the pressure canner you should open it away from yourself because it does have a lot of steaming water in there right where's my jar lifter right 
and lift the jars out and set them here. You'd always have a, a tea towel sitting down to put uh, your jars on. Exceedingly, exceedingly hot. Let me bring you closer and then you can see because they are still. And you have to remember this is fat. So we all know. You see that? How they're still bubbling away. Now you can see the solids at the bottom. Once the jars have cooled enough for me to handle. I will show you what, um, what, what's done about them solids. So we will come back in a while when the jars are cool enough to be handled. Right, the uh, jars of butter have cooled enough. Uh, let me show you for me to handle them. So I've moved them over this side. Now, as you can see, You've still got these solids at the bottom. I'll lift it up, you can see it better. There you go, there's solids down here. It is still warm, but they are cooling sort of rapidly. So what you want to do is, about every 20 minutes, give your jars a good shake. Mix the solids up in them. So, and keep doing that until they are completely set. This way, the solids distribute through the butter. Otherwise, you'll end up with that clarified butter on the top and a solid butter on the bottom. So, we want to give them a real good shake. every 20 minutes until they're cooled and solidified and once that's done and they have um, solidified then uh, it's just a case of label date and put them away somewhere cool and dark so you definitely don't want these sitting around in your kitchen because they, they will just, if the kitchen gets hot, they will just turn again to liquid like any butter will. So cool and dark. Uh, right, that's all mine shaken up for now. And each time you shake them, it takes that little bit longer for it all to separate again. But um, eventually we will get to the stage where it is just solid butter. Yeah. 